Welcome back to Xbox Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at the recent batch of announced Xbox titles scheduled to leave Game Pass at the end of August, whether that's going to be console, cloud or PC, and we've got four titles in total for you. We'll give you an idea though about the game and then let you know how long it would take you to beat that story as well as how long it would take you to get all of those achievements. So with that, like, hit subscribe, join our growing Xbox family, and let's get started. So all of today's titles then they do leave on August 31st but at the end of this video there's a couple of more updates I do want to throw out there that seemed worthy of a shout out in a leaving Game Pass video. So first up, Blair Witch, a first person horror survival, I'd honestly consider it average at best, I don't think it's a huge loss for Game Pass. That said though, it's inspired by the movies of the same name, so think a whole lot of almost slow burn horror here. It's really not like going for jump scares this one, it's very much aiming for that psychological kind of affair. It's 1996 though, a young boy has disappeared and you'll be taking on the role of a former police officer assisting with the search. As I said, look, it's pretty average. I don't regret playing it, but I also wouldn't say it's a must-play except for maybe those hardcore genre fans out there that have, you know, played everything else. It looks good at least though, and it does have a good handle on the tension and showing almost the police officer's troubled past. The best thing about this game though, honestly, your dog who accompanies you just got a ton of character and it's very easy to get attached and kind of be a little bit concerned about their, you know, safety. Leaving console, cloud and PC though, the runtime here, it's right around 5 hours for that main story and then achievements, you can clean them up in 8. A quick mention then for this one, but NBA 2K21, this is a cloud and console loss. I'm not sure what I can add really, if you care about basketball, no doubt it's probably already going to be installed on your console, so this is more a warning for those that still play it, maybe you have a few achievements you want to wrap up. It's a beast though this one, with how long to beat reporting, it's going to take you somewhere in the region of 200 hours to get those achievements, which is just crazy stuff. You'd need to basically never sleep between now and the end of the month if you were to pick up and install this game for the first time. Otherwise though it's the usual yearly changes, you know squads, a few graphical tweaks and then a few new mechanics, but it really wasn't a huge step forward. Alright, so Stranger Things 3, and this is another one that could be doable before it leaves. Now the main story, you're looking at right around 8 hours for achievements, around 12 to 14. The game though, it got some mixed reviews at launch, but I enjoyed it. It's a retro-styled adventure game in keeping with the show, and it accompanies the third season, giving you, you know, both moments from the show, but then also expanding upon them. This is very much a game for fans of the show, though honestly, you know, half of the fun is seeing the locations and the characters around you as you figure out puzzles, and also go to war in battle. It's especially fun in local co-op though and yeah, check it out, it's short enough you could get it done and you'll save a little cash in the process. This one it's going to be leaving cloud, console and PC. The final game leaving then, that is Double Kick Heroes, I really like this one, it's a pixel style rhythm game with a dash of shooting attached to the rhythm mechanics. The concept, you're playing a band on the run through what is a zombie infested world and you destroy them with your metal music. It's got an arcade mode so you can just freely kind of choose tracks, jump between them, there's no real like famous heavy hitters in that soundtrack honestly, but the best fun then with this one it's gotta be the story mode where you get to navigate an overworld map. Not a long game either, maybe 3 hours for that story, 7 hours for achievements, but yeah, music fans, this one it's less unknown, but well worth your time. So a couple more Game Pass updates then for you all. Dead by Daylight Stranger Things content it is going away on November 17th. I know that's a good while away yet, but I figured let's just give it a quick shout out. While the map, sadly, there's nothing you can do that will be gone forever, you can still add the DLC characters and they're actually marked down then with a 50% discount. Either way though, DLC or not, if you've never played this game, it's incredible, seriously addictive and I strongly suggest it. Then Forza Motorsport 7, it's not just leaving Game Pass September 15th, but leaving the store entirely. You will no longer be allowed to purchase this game. It's time to basically retire it because they've lost their rights to use the car models, but you can at least still buy it up until that date and keep it that way. So you can do that either obviously physically or digitally. To send it off in style though, it's rocking a 75% discount from the base game through to that ultimate variation as well. So if you love the game and you don't want to see it go, make sure to grab it before then. And that's another batch of games leaving, but thankfully we continue to get great new games every single week, so make sure to check out our Thursday video where Luke breaks down the weekly editions and just gives you an idea of kind of what's going to be worth a look. With that though then, hit subscribe, join our growing Xbox family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.